Wood has been joined for making structures for millennia. Joinery, such as a mortise and tenon, is thousands of years old. There we go. The timber frame becomes a very visible part of any structure. New modern American timber frames showcase the frame and are highly finished. It is a very intimate thing to craft something. It's not for nothing that you say you practice a craft because you're always evolving, you're always learning, you're always thinking. We're within a sixteenth. I love the geometry. I love the cutting of wood. You gonna roll this timber? I love that I'm part of building people's homes. I love my trade. Mortise and tenons are glorified locators, and then you uh, pin it together to lock it together. If I hold this right here, you have the shoulders and you have the cheeks, which is remarkably similar to uh, the way that I'm built. I have eight students in this class, four sets of two, and they are working on a timber frame each. We're building a 10 by 12 timber frame structure. Um, I'm going to put it up on my property here on the shore. I think what I'm going to do is make a little sauna inside. I always had a fascination with timber frames, and so when he got a spot in this workshop, I jumped on it. I work in cloud integration. I trade agricultural commodities. Students come here because they want to get their hands on the world of craft, and in particular on the story of the North where the seasons define the character of the landscape and your relationship to the land and the crafts you can pursue. This, is here. this should be out. I'm here with my dad, kind of being his assistant. And we hope to go home with a little knowledge and a pile of wood. I am no longer working for money. I work wood for a living. I have some knowledge of furniture making, but this is on a much bigger scale. Ben is being modest. He's an artist who happens to work with wood. I don't know if he would agree, but I'm a dad. Still learning. So. <laughs> All it takes is curiosity and a willingness to begin. That's really at the heart of the work of the school and the spirit that students bring to this place. Our project is a tree house for my boys. We're going to do all the work on them and bring them the timbers home and hopefully make a tree fort. I'll be the one doing the work at home. <laughs> make sure I don't screw it up. Oh. Two and a quarter, three and a quarter. Okay. I install underground sprinkler systems. And I am a maintenance guy at his business. Uh, I'm oh. off by a 16th. One of the guys I just found out today is a dentist. So it, it runs the gamut. The accountant to the experienced craftsman come and take these classes. North House Folk School emerged from people who care about living a life that reflects the beauty that we're surrounded by here. Grand Marais, Minnesota is incredibly beautiful, it's incredibly remote, and it has inspired craft and art with the Anishinaabe and the Ojibwe people on whose land we are, and then the Scandinavian influence from the immigrant communities that settled here on the North Shore. Our curriculum reflects traditional northern craft, the things that we make that are useful to us in a northern home. This little knot's not going to bother me. Being a folk school teacher is about being able to share a craft and build a community in the classroom. See how I'm marking this with a nice long V? I learned that like on the third day of my apprenticeship. We look for teachers who have a great story to share. The pants that I'm wearing, black corduroy pants with bell bottoms, are traditional German Zimmermanns Hosen. I apprenticed as a Zimmermann, basically German for timber framer, in my hometown of Aachen in Germany. There's the tradition of the Wanderschaft, traveling in your trade for three years and a day. And during that time, you wear this traditional outfit. I did that journey, and I've been wearing these pants ever since. Using this as a 16-foot timber that is drawn as a straight timber is going to get you in all sorts of trouble because it's not straight. The way you assess it is to get down and sight along the timber. You see that? We speak of crown and bow. Crown is vertically if it has a curve, and bow is to the side, either right or left. The other thing that you look for in grade is called slope of grain. So the more continuous it is, uninterrupted by knots, the more capacity the timber has. 
traditionally you work timber frames green. The wood is fresh. Hedstrom Lumber has been operating here in Grand Marais, Minnesota for over 100 years. We are pretty much the exclusive supplier of timbers for timber framing to North House Folk School. We use 100% of every log that comes into the mill. The bark, the sawdust, the wood chips, all of it. There's a lot of careful attention to detail, especially on items like timbers that are needing to be made in an exact way to allow the crafters to shape them perfectly. It takes a custom mill in order to make custom timbers, and we work with the loggers out in the woods to get exactly what they need at North House. We're pretty proud that we're able to connect to craft in that way. We use the drawings to transfer the lines where a mortise and where a tenon needs to be in full scale onto the timber. I double check that no mistakes were made. The next step is cutting. The chain mortiser is basically a very controlled electric chainsaw. Once you figure it out, it's a lot of fun. Once that stops, you have a roughed out mortise that still needs to be cleaned up with a chisel. Hand tools absolutely still have their place in the trade today. The timber framing square, the handsaw, the mallet and chisel, those are the bread and butter tools. Once the joinery is cut, we assemble the timber frame. The goal is to see where there might still be some little finessing to do in the joinery to get things to be right on dimension. Actually, you can see right here, see the crush marks there? That's where it's fighting us. You get it as good as you can make it before it goes up. Now's the time. It's going to stand for four generations. At the raising, it has to be exactly right, not a 32nd of an inch off. I have 182 timbers in my timber frame home, and they all have a memory in me of working on them. In the winter, when it's very cold, the timbers will crack and make a really loud sound, and you know that they're drying out and expanding a bit and maybe telling me something. <laughs> I was a teacher, and I had summers off. Learning to work with your hands to make something useful is just something I wanted. Susan cut every timber in the structure by herself, and it took her three years of coming to our Build Your Own Timber Frame class. And now here's this home that speaks profoundly of who she is and about the landscape she values and about the life she wanted to lead. The day that we were raising the timber, we had just an outstanding crane operator. My family came, people from the class came, and it went up in a day. I just love my area, my woods, and my timber frame house. Maybe that's enough, maybe it's not. There. I think there will always be a place for the craftsperson to exercise what they love, put their personal touch on to the design and the execution and the materials chosen for their timber frames to create these unique timbered structures. There you go. This is looking really good. Nothing gives me more joy than seeing timber joined together like this. There will also always be people that want that and that find the timber framer and make the whole thing work like it's worked for millennia.